The ever-evolving field of medicine continues to make improvements in things such as technology, surgeries, transplants, you name it. But what if there was one aspect that is going overlooked? Now this aspect of medicine is how much specific medications are prescribed and in particular not saying there's anything wrong with off-label medication prescription use because for mental health and physical health their off-label is fine to do but in particular medications we don't know enough about yet and in specific when medications start being pushed by insurance companies pharmaceutical companies and doctors and in this video we're going to focus on Ozempic and this series will kind of uh, we'll be doing some more videos on it's discussing sometimes medications that are prescribed without knowing a lot of the long-term mental and physical side effects of them that have just been pushed to the market and some of the pros and cons of this now first and foremost with real quick with Ozempic uh, which is semaglutide essentially Essentially what this medication is, it's a medication for people who have type 2 diabetes. That's what it's prescribed for and approved by the FDA for. Now for off-label use, this is where it's gotten in some trouble, it is prescribed for weight loss. Now once again, FDA approved, FDA approved for type 2 diabetes. And again, if you really, if you think about it as well, when you have something that's being overprescribed with this, when it's being overprescribed, it really hurts in what it's being overprescribed for in particular is weight loss. When this is happening, there's gonna be a lot of other problems that arise from this, meaning when it's overly prescribed, patients aren't gonna be able to pick up their medications as much uh, that need it for, their, for the approval and can cause more problems having to put patients on other different types of medications. So that's what this will be focusing on is this part of medicine in regards to medications being overly prescribed and not studied enough. Now real quick, real quick, so Ozempic or semaglutide, it mimics the GLP-1 uh, receptor and essentially what it's doing is, is it mimics this hormone that you naturally have and it's interacting with your brain and it's an, an agonist, not an antagonist, which is against, it's an agonist signaling to your brain, you're full and hungry. So how it's really effective with weight loss, with weight loss for people who are overweight is that feeling of fullness to where you don't have to, you, you aren't, you can go unfortunately sometimes with Ozempic multiple days without really eating anything, you don't really notice this. So it's really suppressing that appetite. And another thing about, sim, uh, about semaglutide as well in the GLP-1 receptor is the whole point of why this is naturally released in the body is it's signaling when your insulin, when the insulin is a, uh, when it, uh, essentially when it needs to relink, when it needs to, when you need to release insulin, when your blood sugar is high. So let's say you have to, you've eaten a very big meal, right? When you've eaten a big meal and your blood sugar is very high. Sorry, I got my tongue twisted. This hormone or receptor is lowering the blood sugar. So it signals I need insulin to lower it. Now, somebody who's overweight or in this idea of type 2 diabetes, it'd be prescribed to help because it's not that they can't produce insulin, that'd be type 1, it's that they're having problems um, producing it. Type 1, they can't produce it. Type 2, having problems producing it. Um, so it's help, it's initiating that insulin response. But if you're just, if somebody is overweight and being prescribed it for weight and they have no problems with their uh, release of insulin, then this on top of it's gonna drop your blood sugar substantially. So for somebody with type two diabetes, it's gonna help bring it back down when your blood sugars are running very high. But if you're just using it for weight gain, it's gonna drop it even further, which leads to this next aspect I really wanna hit on. And this is what's interesting. There aren't a lot of long-term studies done with this because it's still a pretty recent medication that's been introduced to the market over the past couple of years at least. But the problem with this is in particular from the mental, let's start with the mental, uh, from the mental side. I'll do it with the physical, we'll do them together. But from a mental standpoint, one thing that's been reported is it being very effective 
like after six weeks, they're like after six weeks, they've lost a lot, they've lost weight. So it's been effective for weight loss. And let's, and we're gonna hit it from this perspective, not type two diabetes, but from the weight loss perspective of being prescribed so much. Like you see this on TikTok. I was prescribed this instead of sometimes trying other things first, just going right to this. And I'm not saying it doesn't help somebody with, for example, um, somebody who's overweight, but sometimes I feel like it's just being prescribed, just like, kind of like candy to an, uh, to an extent. Not hating on it though, I'm just stating some facts with it. So let's say you've noticed six weeks in, you've lost weight, but one side effect that people have been noticing with this, and this is why long-term studies really need to be done, is that you've lost a lot of interest in activities you liked before. And you'd be like, well, what if you really like to eat? Okay, fair enough. But I'm talking activities such as watching movies with family, um, exercising, that's a thing. And also people are being prescribed this, unfortunately, when they're not truly even overweight as well and getting their hands on it not just for the off-label for weight for uh for over for being overweight but also just because somebody's wanting to lose 20 pounds because they're playing a sport right now they're playing sports they're wrestling unfortunately it's been prescribed for wrestling to lose weight which not good but mentally again losing interest in prior things i was actually reading um something online actually uh, somebody um a guy who was a wrestler who started taking it, he had to lose 20 pounds throughout the season. He took it, then he had no interest in wrestling anymore. So that's one thing. Also, it also has been shown in the short term to cause more increased anxiety and depression. And this isn't everyone, this is just side effects I'm reading about with it. And since it's a fairly new med, it's interesting to know these things. Another very interesting thing with this, it's when somebody, when they're, another thing is there was another person who was developing OCD tendencies. And one thing that doctors should be evaluating with you if they are gonna put you on this in general is your mental health history. Because if, if you have a long history of anxiety, depression, uh, SI or suicidal ideation, things like this, there's a chance they won't put you on it for this reason, but it's people are still being put on it to where these increased mental health problems are actually also leading to things such as OCD and psychosis tendencies. Um, but with this, another, another uh, Another study I was reading was somebody who did have a history of depression, but it was controlled with medication, and they were trying to lose weight because the antidepressant was causing weight gain, which a lot of times SSRIs do cause weight gain. They, they wanted to take this, were prescribed it, and then from there, depression increased, and in particular, OCD really started increasing, and she was starting to have psycho uh, psychotic uh, tendencies as well, meaning her house would be completely clean and she couldn't, she always thought there was something going on with it. She developed paranoia. She thought people were out to get her, things like this. But when she stopped the medication, the Ozempic, it left, it, the, the tendencies were gone. She went back to her baseline. But the interesting thing with this is, which I'm gonna go into the physical side effects now of this is her weight gain, her weight gain after six weeks of taking it, after, after six weeks of being off the medication, she'd gained all the weight back plus an extra 20 pounds. So a total of 40, uh, I mean, she'd gained like a total of, I don't know if it was, she lost, it didn't say, I think, no, she lost 30 pounds. Then she gained 20 pounds. With the wrestler, he lost 20. It didn't talk about in that idea about if the weight gain, um, about if he put weight back on or if he stopped taking it. But in this one, stopped it and put on plus 20 pounds. So this leads us to the physical side. And real quick, like and subscribe if you can. Um, I greatly appreciate it. It helps with the algorithm as well. On the physical side, weight gain. So when somebody stops this in the long term, or even let's say they're taking it, they've been uh, taking it for, let's just say three or four, three or four months, pretty quickly your weight, people have been reporting weight gain, putting their weight back on and putting on extra weight, which in itself as well is leading to more mental health problems, putting on excessive weight outside of the baseline before they even started uh, before they even started Ozempic. Now another thing that's very interesting to point out with this as well is hypoglycemia. Now hypoglycemia in particular is very dangerous. It can cause confusion, uh, things such as uh, not being hydrated. It increases fall risk. So one thing that can happen is over time with this through not eating, like through, since you're, you're taking this med, you're not eating, you're not eating. 
One scary thing that can happen is your body can sometimes adjust to that feeling of your blood sugar being a lot lower than normal. So if you stop it and you go back on and start eating, your blood sugars are gonna be very unbalanced to where you can feel very irritated or you can also your blood sugars um, can spike the opposite way, way too quickly. Um, so when, you, when you're taking something like this and it's causing hypoglycemia, when you really truthfully don't really need it and that's being overlooked, that can cause in itself some physical problems like fall risk, you name it. Now, another interesting thing with this as well is things such as gastroparesis can form, which essentially what gastroparesis is, is your stomach, it, it, like the gastric emptying of your food, it can, it can be paralyzed, which sometimes you have to go in and do surgery for um, to correct this, which can lead to things such as like uh, very wet stools, stomach problems, even constipation, things like this. And also another thing that's interesting is, is if, for example, you have a history of thyroid issues. So if they're, so if somebody's considering putting you on this, they should always do routine labs because if you have any sort of thyroid problems, one long-term problem that could potentially rise with it is um, potentially uh, thyroid cancer, thyroid storms, increased thyroid problems with it. Um, a lot of times if somebody has something like pancreatitis uh, or liver problems or even kidney problems, it can cause their seeing, and this is long-term as in like not long-term, but over like what they're, what they're saying, like even af over like after like two to three years is inflammation of your organs and whatnot. So long-term, who knows what they'll find with it. And there's always warnings with all medications. Once again, there are, but we're specifically talking about popular, the pop popular medications right now that there aren't enough studies out. So I don't wanna hate on, I'm not hating on medications or off-label use of prescriptions. We're just digging, we're just digging down to see, you know, if it's being prescribed so frequently, have they looked at things such as side effects near as much? Also, gallstones can happen as well. So if, if you can't see, if you can't see, bef the big thing is before you start this medication with as much as it being prescribed, it shouldn't be you just go to your primary care provider and say, oh, I wanna lose a few pounds, and they give it to you. You should be getting your labs drawn. They should be going over your health history. They should be going over your mental health history um, as well due to some of these tendencies as stated as potentially OCD tendencies and increased anxiety, depression, um, as well as well as potential psy uh, psychotic tendencies. Now, I'm not gonna say full-blown psychosis, but things that could definitely cause problems with your day-to-day -day activities. And the big thing as well is activities that you liked in the past, like as I stated with that wrestler who was put on it to, lo for, to lose weight, losing, losing that joy of those activities that you like to do. So I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. We're gonna start covering uh, medications that are prescribed right now more frequently as well. Um, and kind of look at, if we don't have a lot of information, some of uh, the side effects in the short and potentially long-term that are starting to develop. Just to give awareness out there and whatnot, we're not hating on medications at all. That's not the point of this. Medicine is, medicine is great, we've went so far. And we're gonna continue to, but Always, always, always do your research because a lot of times healthcare professionals with as busy as they are, they're not going to be going over everything with you. And same with pharmacists, unfortunately, to where you really have to make sure anything you're taking that you're really, you're looking at the inside as well. And I'm not saying, if you look up anything about a med, about a side effect, there'll be conspiracy theories on it. And that's not what you want to become as somebody who thinks you're going to develop anything that, because you can find an example of anything on there where something causes a cancer or whatnot. Don't take that approach. Just do, you know your health, you need to know your own health history, your physical and mental hip history as well, and know, and know if you feel like it could be right for you. Because your doctor, you need, to, you need to make sure you're telling them as well how you're feeling. And once again, if you're just taking this to take it, there are potential, there are potential side effects and long-term potential uh, problems that can arise as well. The next video we'll be doing in regards to this series as well will be over Depakote, just so everyone knows. Because um, there's a lot of off-label uses that it is prescribed for that, in my opinion, it's wild. Which I'm going to go into a few examples of the specific instances that I personally know about this, about people being prescribed this medication after just being seen once for it without getting labs drawn. So, we're, so this whole series is designated to the one aspect that could be improved, which is medication uh, 
medication management and just prescription meds that are prescribed without knowing enough about them. We're gonna cover as well the celebrity series as well with ment um, over people and mental health, um, like their histories with mental health as well. This is all things mental health, this channel. Like, subscribe, comment. Hope you liked it. Love you all. Subscribe. And one more time, leave a comment. Have a great weekend.